Yeah. And then so lots just, of tables to like sit down and hang out. or less. Um, our largest motor is about 50 millimeters in diameter, uh, brush, and for brushless it's 90. Air Force Research Laboratories, oh, yeah. they uh -huh. want a device that could, uh, that could carry, yes, uh, in injured soldiers, but also supplies oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and just anything they need out in the battlefield. Oh. And here you can see she's trying to pick up this uh, about 50 pound load, or 60, I'm not sure what it was exactly in there. Uh, but it was pretty heavy, and we were just using that to demonstrate the technology. So here you can see the machine is off, and, 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 uh, and she's not able really to pick up this easily, and, and, and she's putting it back, and we're instructing her to turn it on, which is pulling down on both sides. So we went through this evaluation during the last four years with the help of uh, several companies. Uh, this is uh, again more of the same evaluation. Take it away. So this is a self-contained shoe right here that basically uh, preload manageable. Awesome. Spring along on this side, so this would be you know, your spring technology. Yeah. Yeah. And then on this side, we have it integrated with the trousers. Heck yeah. So now the trousers are in here, so you can put an actuator. Right now, this has got oh, yeah. a uh, quick release. So this is what we're showing here is a plug and play design. Oh. System, uh, the Dark Hardiman, it's, uh, it was a military founded project by General Electric with the vision uh, to in enforce people to be able to lift several hundred kilograms of weight. Unfortunately, that product never made it beyond the state of an experimental prototype. The reason for it is that uh, technology to, compl uh, to control such a complex machine was just not there. These times have changed. Another thing you're probably not so familiar with is what happened in Russia at that time. They were having a totally different approach to robotics. Um, uh, at that time, people were developing the first myoelectric hand that was transistorized and therefore portable. On this picture, you could see the battery pack in the middle and the control electronics at the bottom. So I think, for me, this is the first example of a fully wearable robotic device. And generally, in the 1960s, there was a great interest in myoelectric control and uh, in the scientific society, and 1967, Austria is always a little bit late, things started to move there as well. So what happened there is that uh, Vienna Town, a uh, hearing aid company with high competence in miniaturized electronics, parted up with Otto Bach, a company that uh, built prosthesis and had a lot of competence in mechanic, and actually they built the first commercially available myoelectric hand. So this year we are celebrating 50 years of myoelectric products. If we look at the time, at the cumulative time the system has been used, we would end up with 280,000 years. That's 
almost at the age of modern mankind. And I like the present uh, the, the point uh, exobiotics made before uh, the sum of steps. What do you think? How many steps have been taken with the sea leg system? It's 155 billion steps. Translating that to this, this to distance, it would be 185 million kilometers walk. That's 45 times to the moon and back, and then all the way to the sun. But even high-end products have limitations. This is a picture from a request for report for from a sea leg. It has a gunshot. So with the see, people start doing things we never thought of. <laughs> This is the first surgery ever caught on video. It's not that gross at all. This is Professor Von Bergman. I actually was at his institute in Potsdam not too long ago giving a lecture. And look at this, the first surgery, and it is a free end amputation. Yeah, and, and, and look at that. So look the, the, oh. that's, the, that's the infection control nurse. She's pissed because he's not wearing gloves. Oh. <laughs> Just oh. along. It has actuated uh, plantar flexion at the ankle and extension at the knee. Um, I'll show you some data to support this in a, in a sec, but this is the first device ever that has made people run faster and run for less energy. Um, and so, and again, what it comes back to is it comes back to being able to put in a lot of power for a very small amount of weight. Uh, you can see here, this is, the, this is it moving, it loads. Um, full uh, disclosure, there's not a compressor integrated into this system. Um, there is, it was outside of our funding scope. So those of you who've worked with the government, no, outside your funding scope, save it for the next contract. So uh, there's not a compressor in this project, uh, but this is, so it's run all, all off, off for air. But again, my standard belief is, or my fundamental belief is, is the problem is not a battery problem, it's an actuator problem. And we don't have good enough actuators to make use of batteries here, here. Uh, at this point. And so you can see here, it's sensing what's going on in the feet, and then it is uh, applying torques as needed into the gate. Um, here it's, here it's running, so this is the knee integrated as well. You can actually see the pressure pulse slide down the knee joint on impact uh, because as it, as it contacts, it's trying to resist, uh, uh, resist the flexion of the knee. So this device uh, is about all in. It's about 20 pounds, uh, shade over 20 pounds. And so some of the things you can see here is, uh, for, we'll look at kind of the status quo device, where it crosses the, the x-axis, so that's about 2.6-ish miles per hour. That's the peak speed you could have a system with that power capabilities, the peak speed that you'll ever see it be metabolically neutral. Beyond that, it doesn't matter what you're going to do. It's going to be a metabolic detriment, even if it's operating at peak capacity. And mind you, one of the other things we did is we worked with the assumption that you can always get that power, when in reality, we all know actuators aren't uniform like that. They have speed limits and torque limits, and so the curve actually has more dimensions on it. I believe that if we want to make a next generation of systems that are uh, very accessible and mobile, I think what you have to do is we have to build higher specific power actuators. Um, I, and and I'm, I'm a firm believer that air is not the, the only solution. Um, air happens to be the solution that we've used because we can execute on a higher specific power um, approach. Uh, Somebody makes other actuator approaches, architectures. Honestly, as a community, I implore us to attempt to make higher specific power uh, actuation architecture um, because I think it's the only way you're going to see these benefits uh, is because specific power is the key.